Um, the, the Penguin Anthology of 20, 20th Century American Poetry is uh, it's a gargant it's a gargantuan project, and basically uh, I'm trying to make sense poetically of the 20th century in America. So it it starts um, really right there with um, uh, Edgar Arlington Robinson, and it goes up until anything published. In the year two thousand, I'm trying. So, in, what the difference in this anthology is? And instead of just a poem here, a poem there, two poems by this person, I'm trying to give a sense of of major poets who then influenced other poets as well. So that there be there may be quite a few poems by, say, um, let's choose someone, William Carlos Williams, and then show how he influenced all sorts of other poets who may have a few other, uh, uh, not as many poems in the anthology. What makes a classic poem? I, I, I think that when a poem can move, readers across generations and across its specific class, or race, then it becomes truly classic. I mean, in other words, if the poem is so moving that even if you have no experience in that particular setting, be it 1920s um, Harlem, let's say, you still are so moved that 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 you can put yourself in that position. That means that the writer has managed to go beyond the 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 personal and 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 touch the humanity in all of us and uh it's been a, it's really a blast to read it because I, I realize how um that this does hold true for the truly great poems oh gosh no there's not a specific poem there there are, it changes it changes depending on the on the um what I'm working with, where I'm at at the moment, but um, there are, I mean, there are just poems that are just so amazing to me. Um, and, I, and if I name one, then I, of course, lose another, but, but it, it, it goes in and out. I think that, hmm, let me think. I can't name a specific one. Lines flow through my head. There's a a very beautiful German poem by Goethe, which I often say to myself because it's like a, a little prayer, and, and uh, but it's also totally untranslatable. I've never been able to to translate it, and um, it's humbling because you realize that we need translators. Please, 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 we need our translators. Otherwise, we'll never have any of these poems. We would never know who, how Baudelaire moves us or anything like that, but you also realize how much gets lost, uh, how, how necessarily poetry is so bonded to the, to the language in which it is composed that it's, you're, you're always going to lose something, and I find that very humbling. Um, so, yeah, but it's a wonderful little poem, and it rhymes, but it rhymes in odd ways. Über alle Gipfel herrscht Ruhe. In alle Wipfeln spürest du kaum ein Hauch. Warte nur, balde ruhest du auch. That's it. You can hear the rhymes. And basically translated, it, it says, over all the mountains, tranquility rests. In all of the tips of the trees, and that's vipful, which is a great little word, in all the tops of the trees, you can, you can hardly feel a breath. Wait, just wait. Soon you too will rest. And it's just, it's because of the rhymes that makes, and it's such a calm poem, and it's just, and certain words are totally untranslatable, like, 
Wipfeln, which does mean tips of the trees. <laughs> but that doesn't sound very good in English. But it, it, it almost rocks you to sleep. And I just find it an incredibly amazing poem for its tightness and yet tranquility.